but from the one hour, let's go to the 30 minute and take a look at what we've got here. So I think we are in a descending triangle. Now, descending triangles are typically looked at as bearish just because price is getting rejected off of highs. It's not breaking out. It keeps testing the support level. And uh, they're absolutely right. Oftentimes, you know, descending triangles do break down. However, I think a differentiating factor in this case is that price moves up into the trend. So we set our resistance here at our high. We move down, set our A, B, C, D, and I think we just set our E. And uh, this is further supported by the amount of consolidation that we have leading up to the apex. Usually just from E, we just break down, uh, but we didn't do that. And uh, we actually broke out. We were positive today. We got above this trend line for the first time. And I thought it was very interesting and exciting just because uh, Nugget is my second largest holding. And uh, I really enjoy this, um, you know, $6 pop that I think that we might see here. And I go into that further in GDX's chart. But let's go on to the 15 minute. And hard to see there. It's going to five minute. Small divergence here. In the five minute, we've got a high, then a higher high, and price stays exactly the same. And uh, we shoot up the next morning's open. So let's go to the one minute and really dive into what the descending triangle bearish version looks like. We are in the bullish version right now on the 30 minute time frame, hour time frame. We're in the one minute time frame. And uh, I think this is very, this is literally like perfect uh, every step of the way what a bearish descending triangle looks like. And I think that the reason we're having this bearish descending triangle is we broke out about 70% of the way to our apex. Now, typically price makes its actual move at the apex. Like I said in my, uh, I think it was SOXL, Soxl Semiconductor Analysis, is that I showed that price came down and then it retouched the apex after its breakout. And I think that we're doing the exact same thing here. So we come up and I think we're going to come back down and retouch it. So this was Friday's price action. And I, I wanted to walk through what I saw throughout the day, kind of. And I say kind of, I didn't, I didn't catch it until we set in this C wave basically right here. Uh, it's very hard to identify anything this early. But I went back and really dived deep into it. And uh, let's just you know go through it. You can skip this if you are an expert in descending <laughs> triangle breakdowns. Otherwise, uh, I'd love to have you stick around. So this breakout right here, this is our pole. This is our pole number one. We draw this uh, blue line right here all the way down to our breakdown, which is this support line right here. We run the support line all the way through. Uh, so this is our first resistance zone. This is our first support zone. We come up, we set our A wave. Let's just go through the A, B, C, D, E. E is at the top here. And uh, like I said on the hour chart, um, usually when we set our E, we don't consolidate here and break out higher. We just kind of dump. But so I've marked this resistance. This is our pole one. And this is our first support zone. This is our support zone because when we come down and break down below it, price resists off this level. So this is actually our first resistance, but this is the support for the A wave. And uh, I labeled this second line the ultimate support, support number two. So number one, number two. And this is important because it helps us identify different apexes and turning points in the price action as well as the poles. So we run on up here, we set our high. And oftentimes you'll see this in a descending triangle is that price will poke its head out and, uh, you know, try to get interested buyers coming into the market. And uh, it's a false breakout every single time. And usually we come right back down to support. Now, this is our pole two. It's a lot smaller than our first pole. Our first pole comes into effect at the apex of this descending triangle. And uh, this false breakout marks our ultimate apex point. Uh, so I, I drew this in our dashed line. And uh, this is going to be our ultimate apex. And you can see here that this pole right here at the apex comes down and uh, touches our, our previous descending triangle uh, resistance line. This is actually very bullish right here. If it does touch this right by the apex, uh, this would be an excellent buy point right here uh, down at the 3330s in my opinion. Uh, but anyways, this is our pole number two. You come down, set our B, and then our C is supposed to have our third pole in it. <clears throat> so. When we sell off here, this is our third pole. So we've got pole one, pole two, pole three. We set our D, our E, and then a telltale sign almost always is when price moves down very smoothly like this. Makes a high and then it just moves down very smoothly. If you uh, just watch out for these, I guess maybe I can try and identify some in the other ETFs. But uh, this is a telltale sign that you're going to break down lower. So C to uh, the breakdown point. This is our new support. 
I guess this would be our support number three right here. So we only use the poles twice, uh, initial pole and the breakdown pole. Uh, so from E to breakdown of our support level is our pole number three being used. And we use them in inverse order. So for example, we'll do uh, pole one, pole two, pole three, pole three, pole two, pole one. So we come down and touch this, and this is now our new support line. And uh, theory says that it should retouch close to the apex point. And uh, we, we see that going on here, which kind of further supports my rationale that gold will come down, in my opinion, and touch closer to the apex point. Um, so we curl back up, retouch. This is now resistance, previous support, resistance. And uh, we break down even further. So once we lose this support, you see this the pull three being used a third time. And uh, this is our new support zone right here. Uh, our pull two is used for our original apex point. Again, each of these poles is a clone of each other, so I'm not just um, randomly guessing at the prices here. They are the exact same uh, length. So the original descending triangle apex comes right here. So original resistance, original support, they converge onto this point right here. I draw my pole number two to give me a guesstimate for how far price is going to drop. Again, if you, if you catch it early enough, you can just draw this breakdown, figure out what your apex is going to be, and then uh, use this as your profit uh, target right here, the end of the pull too. This is a measured move. And uh, after this, we kind of get exhausted from selling. We completely filled this gap here that we had in the morning. Uh, this was a gap up from like 33.50 to like 34.50. And we start moving higher. We're getting exhausted here. We need to get closer to the end of our second pull, our second resistance zone, our dotted resistance, uh, so we can drop to the apex and then break out. Uh, and during this, we can see a pretty textbook uh, ascending wedge going on here. So supported by prices all the way, it comes up, touches, this is E right here, and we break out lower, come back up right where the apex would be to try to break out. It fails, and we move on lower. So ultimate price point for the buy, in my opinion, is this first pull, cloned it. This is the apex point. I think that this is going to be a very important time come Monday as well as important price to hold. If we fall back into this descending triangle, uh, that's uh, bearish, but given the success of these other pull two and pull three, I think that we are going to have a nice entry here, hopefully on uh, strong support and bounce off of this previous resistance on the larger picture. Uh, one last thing I wanted to note earlier in my video, I talked about the descending triangle volume pattern. Uh, you can see here that volume is highest in the beginning, descending triangle all the way down. And typically, when you set in your A, you'll have your lowest volume of the day. Uh, this is just according to theory. This is this is not my own analysis. I I just uh, been studying it. But this is you know textbook. This is the lowest volume that we see. There's zero volume right here, and we break out higher, descending triangle back down, sideways move into the breakdown, we break down. There's capitulation right here. We see buyers scoop coming in and scooping it up and uh, descending volume all the way. So th that's my detailed breakdown of a descending triangle pattern that we have on this breakdown for Nugget and why I actually think that it might be a bullish scenario. So this is the ebb and flow of the market. It's not just a straight shot up. It's uh, you know consolidation right here and then just a measured move up. And I think that we're seeing the same thing here. We've got a measured, we've got a strong move up, consolidation, breakout. And if you've been watching my other uh, videos, we come back, touch this apex point, and we springboard higher after that. So there's the pattern right here.